This video has been updated from a similarly titled 2020 video. I added some additional content and answered questions that people put in the comments. I also removed the background music, sorry for that, and have better audio quality and some new slides. So if you saw the previous video, this should be a better experience and hopefully there is something new here that you'll enjoy. So let's talk about if and when the Saints will return to Missouri. I remember as a child being told this would happen, but then I got older and it seemed like the narrative in the church changed and that the saints were not going to return to Missouri. I realized that this came from people confusing the gathering that is happening today to a very different event that will occur in the future. Early church members always knew and believed the final gathering would be in Missouri. Then later confusion stemmed from statements such as these, and there are a lot of them that say to remain in our own native lands or you'll be blessed in whatever part of the world you're in and every nation is the gathering place for its own people. There are even quite recent examples of apostles and prophets saying these very things. And they are of course right. There is no centralized gathering right now. But does that mean there will be no return to Missouri prior to the second coming? Have we abandoned the 10th article of faith that says Zion will be built upon the American continent? I believe much of the confusion comes from faithful members that believe that the second coming is so close that a return to Missouri simply can't be in the cards. Think about it. If you believe we are months or even a few short years away from the second coming, we can't be returning to Missouri. Now, we aren't going to cover the second coming in this video specifically, but the more you understand about the signs of the times and the coming events that need to precede the second coming, you will get much more comfortable with the return to Missouri, including when and how this will occur. If you are interested, I've done many videos on the second coming and related subjects. The easiest way to find them is by using the free gospel learning app where you can find those and many other videos by much more qualified people than me talking about the second coming and every other subject you can imagine. There's even a brand new feature that allows you to filter by teacher so you can just see the content from any particular teacher. Click the search button, type in the second coming, you'll find a ton of great content on the subject or select one of the filter options that are at the top of that same screen. But back to Missouri. One bit of evidence people cite for thinking we won't return to Missouri is Doctrine and Covenants 124, 49 through 51, where in 1841 the saints were being forced from Missouri and the Lord said that he, quote, accepted the offerings of those whom I'd commanded to build up a city and a house under my name in Jackson County, Missouri. In other words, the Lord accepted their sacrifice, but this doesn't mean that the prophecies regarding Missouri would not be fulfilled in some future day. There is a great quote by Bruce R. McConkie that I think eliminates all of the confusion, but to be clear, he isn't the only one that has said this. I think he just said it the most clearly. He said, quote, let Israel gather to the stakes of Zion in all nations. Let every land be assigned to those appointed to dwell there. Let the fullness of the gospel be for all the saints in all nations. Let no blessing be denied them. Let temples arise wherein the fullness of the ordinances of the Lord's house may be administered. But still there is a center place, a place where the chief temple shall stand, a place to which the Lord shall come, a place whence the law shall go forth to govern all the earth. And that central place is what men now call independence in Jackson County, Missouri, but which in a day to come will be the Zion of our God and the city of holiness to his people. The site is selected, the place is known, the decree has gone forth, and the promised destiny is assured. See, he makes it clear that this is a time for gathering, gathering in various lands in which we live, but a time will come later, yet prior to the second coming, Zion will be established in Jackson County, Missouri. There are many places within the scriptures that confirm the prophecies of the return of the righteous to the New Jerusalem, also called Mount Zion. That Zion, the New Jerusalem, will be built upon the American continent. This prophecy is one of our very articles of faith. This prophecy isn't going away, and Joseph Smith identified Independence, Missouri as the specific location. Now, when I speak of Zion in this video, I'm referring to a specific city, the New Jerusalem. There are multiple meanings to the word Zion, such as those who are of one heart and one mind, etc. But in this video, I'm specifically talking about the city of Zion in the last days, also known as the New Jerusalem. Why Jackson County, Missouri? The guide to the scripture says this is a place where Adam blessed his righteous posterity three years before he died and where he will come before the time of the second coming. 
Heber C. Kimball said, quote, and I will say more, the spot chosen for the Garden of Eden was Jackson County in the state of Missouri, where independence now stands. It was occupied in the morn of creation by Adam and his associates, who came with him for the express purpose of peopling this earth. I did a whole video on Adam on Diamond if you want to watch that for more information. The next thing you may be asking is, okay, when will we go? To understand that, we must first understand who will go to Missouri and why we'll go to Missouri. The prophet Ether in the Book of Mormon explains, quote, and that a new Jerusalem should be built up upon this land unto the remnant of the seed of Joseph, for which things there has been a type. For as Joseph brought his father down into the land of Egypt, even so he died there. Wherefore the Lord brought a remnant of the seed of Joseph out of the land of Jerusalem, that he might be merciful unto the seed of Joseph, that they should perish not. Even as he was merciful unto the father of Joseph, that he should perish not. Wherefore the remnant of the house of Joseph shall be built upon this land, and it shall be a land of their inheritance, and they shall build up a holy city unto the Lord, like unto the Jerusalem of old, and they shall no more be confounded until the end come when the earth shall pass away. So understand, the new Jerusalem is for a remnant of the seed of Joseph. So what does that mean, a remnant? The scriptures, especially the Book of Mormon, are filled with stories of remnants. In fact, the constant illustration of a remnant being preserved by the Lord happens so much, it is a clear type and shadow of things to come regarding the New Jerusalem. In the Book of Mormon alone, you have many stories, including the story of the brother of Jared, with their families and friends being saved after the confusion of the languages of the Tower of Babel and being led to a promised land. We have the story of Lehi and Ishmael's family, a righteous remnant being led to the promised land. In Omni, you have most of the Nephites being destroyed, except a small remnant led by Mosiah the first, who is told by the Lord to leave, and they find their way to Zarahemla, where they discover the Mulekites again, a righteous remnant that was led to the promised land. You then have the story of Alma, after hearing the words of Abinadi, gathering a remnant of righteous believers and fleeing into the wilderness. And these are just a few examples from the Book of Mormon. The scriptures are full of stories where a righteous remnant is led to the promised land, where if they remain righteous, they will be protected to find peace. So who will go to Missouri? Doctrine and Covenants 133 makes it clear that the parable of the ten virgins is referring to the righteous remnant of the members of the church at that time will be the ones that will go to the New Jerusalem to meet the bridegroom. It says that this righteous remnant will be among the Gentiles and they will flee to Zion. It also makes the distinction about those that are of Judah that they should flee to Jerusalem. This is an important distinction to help determine the timeline and order of things. If you haven't watched it, you should watch the video I did on the times of the Gentiles to explain this further. Doctrine and Covenants 133 is describing this event after the Gentiles have fully rejected the gospel and the righteous remnant will need to flee to Zion. This is again a remnant. Probably the comment I hear the most from the previous video and, uh, and other videos is how 16 plus million people are going to go to Zion. It will not be 16 million. It will be some extremely righteous saints, a remnant, although we don't know how many, that will flee to Zion prior to the second coming with enough time to build a temple. And then later, after the second coming, the ten tribes will come to Zion. So those that ask the question, how are 16 million people going to go to Jackson County, Missouri all of a sudden? That's just not in the right context. Think sometime in the future after many trials, conflicts, wars, disasters, apostasy, and persecution, then there will be a righteous remnant that shall go to Missouri. So why will we go there? Here are just a few reasons mentioned in Scripture. The wicked will not come into it. Every man that will not take up his sword against his neighbor must needs flee unto Zion for safety. See, this is still where there is wicked prior to the second coming. Quote, and it shall be the only people that shall not be at war one with another. It is a land prepared in all things against the day when tribulation and desolation are sent forth upon the wicked. It will be the only place where you can find peace on the earth. 
Doctrine and Covenants 45 describes those that will live in Zion. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord also shall be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it. And it shall be called Zion, and it shall be said among the wicked, Let us not go up to battle against Zion, for the inhabitants of Zion are terrible, wherefore we cannot stand. And it shall come to pass that the righteous shall be gathered out from among all nations and shall come to Zion singing with songs of everlasting joy. So when will this all happen? Well, we don't know, but we do know some of the things that will need to happen prior and some of the conditions at the time that will need to drive the righteous to Zion. We will need to obtain the temple lot, which is currently in the hands of another church. Some say we will purchase it, and perhaps we will, but there is an interesting quote by Brigham Young, as stated by Heber C. Kimball, that said, quote, Upon the return of the saints, there would be no inhabitants in the area of Missouri to plague the church. I touch on some of this in a video I have on famine. Additionally, the times of the Gentiles needs to be fulfilled. Again, you will want to watch that video to learn more about that. But it means that the Gentiles have fully rejected the gospel. At this time, there will be wars everywhere, including those on American soil. It sounds like total anarchy, and the only refuge is to flee into Zion. The scriptures are clear that we must build a city of Zion. Not that it has to be fully built prior to the second coming, but it would seem that this will be the project for those that flee to Zion. Some say that the city of Enoch will return and be the entire city. We may get into that in another video, and certainly at some point during the millennium the city of Enoch will return, but it isn't clear exactly when. What is clear is that we're going to build temples in the New Jerusalem. The specific spot for the temple is identified in Doctrine and Covenants 57. Scripture makes it clear that the temple will be built in the last days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Bruce R. McConkie explained the significance of the temple that will be built in Independence, Missouri. He said, quote, as to the temple unto which all nations shall come in the last days, it shall be built in the New Jerusalem before the second coming, all as a part of the preparatory process that will make ready a people for the Lord's return. Scripture seems to indicate that Zion must be built before the Lord will appear in his glory. This photo here is of the area of Independence, Missouri that the Prophet Joseph Smith dedicated in August 1831 for the building of the Latter-day Temple, commonly referred to as the Temple Lot. About two years after he received the revelation recorded in Doctrine and Covenants 57, the prophet Joseph Smith received additional revelation concerning the spot where the temple would be constructed. In 1833, the prophet had a plat map drawn for the city of Zion that depicted the temple complex of 24 buildings to be constructed next to each other in independence. The plat map for the city of Zion was prepared under the direction of the prophet Joseph Smith and sent to the saints in Missouri in June of 1833 along with architectural plans for the first temple in Zion. Although the first plot is the most famous, church leaders in Kirtland continued to make additional plans for the city of Zion. In August of 1833, they sent a second plot map to the saints in Missouri along with a letter by Oliver Cowdery explaining, quote, those patterns previously sent you per mail by our brethren were incorrect in some respects being drawn in great haste. We send you another. The corrected plat made several changes, including one, the third block for storehouses was eliminated, two, the remaining temple blocks were made square, three, the temple blocks were stacked east-west instead of north-south, and four, the area encompassed by the plat was vastly increased. The new plans for the temple also increased their length by 20 feet. Some of the early saints had preconceived notions about the establishment of Zion in their day. Many of them believed that the second coming of Jesus Christ was imminent. Consequently, some may have believed that the building of Zion and of the temple there would happen quickly and without much difficulty. However, the Lord cautioned the saints, saying, quote, "...ye cannot behold with your natural eyes for the present time the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter." I wonder if many Latter-day Saints still have preconceived notions about how soon the Lord will come and forget many of the prophecies that need to be fulfilled prior to His coming. This photo is a modern-day aerial view of Independence, Missouri, showing some of the land purchased by the Saints in 1831 for the eventual city of Zion and the Temple. 
Notice there are three different religions owning land here, including the Community of Christ Church, formerly the RLDS, the Church of Christ, who actually owns the Temple Lot, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with a visitor center and a stake center. We will need to own the Temple Lot before we can build the Temple. I heard a rumor a while back that in the actual deed of the Temple Lot, it specifically named the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as an entity that would be expressly prohibited from ever owning the lot. I decided to look into this rumor to see if it were true. The David O. McKay Library has a PDF of a small book published by the Church of Christ in 1963, where they painstakingly go deed transfer by deed transfer to illustrate that they are the rightful owners of the temple lot. I'll put the link to the PDF in the description below. So with all of the deeds, both current and past listed, I went through them and there seems to be no such wording in the deed on the temple lot. There is the following in the current deed, which I can see how some might misconstrue as another church being prohibited from owning it. It reads, And further, it is hereby covenanted in the decree of this deed of conveyance to the said Church of Christ that all persons who have dissented or who may hereafter dissent from this said Church of Christ by withdrawal or otherwise separated or excommunicated from this said Church of Christ shall be forfeit and shall have no claim of right, title, or interest whatsoever, either in law or equity in the aforementioned real estate specifically in this deed. So perhaps that is where the rumor stems from. And I'm no lawyer, but this reads to me that no one that leaves the Church of Christ or is excommunicated is allowed to own the lot. But I see nothing that would prohibit another church from owning it. The LDS Church was founded in April 6, 1830, long before the Church of Christ was founded. So under this language, I can't see how the LDS Church would be prohibited. But who knows? As of now, there are just 7,000 members of the Church of Christ worldwide, so who knows what will happen in the future. So what will go on in the New Jerusalem? In short, temple work. The law shall go forth, Zion shall dwell in safety forever, he will teach his ways and will walk in his paths, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. So how does all of this relate to the second coming? Well, as referenced earlier, the temple in Missouri will be built before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Christ's appearance in the New Jerusalem is the first of several appearances. Another is to the Jews after saving them from a hostile army, and another to the rest of the world when he comes in glory in red apparel. To learn more about these separate parts of the second coming, see my video on the second coming in the free Gospel Learning app, which quotes a lot from a great Ezra Taft Benson talk just prior to him becoming president of the church. I'll put a link below to his talk. It is so difficult to do a video on this subject in isolation because it connects to so many other topics, especially around the second coming, and it can get confusing on a timeline with all the events before and after. So don't stop here. Study all of the subjects around this, and I feel confident you will have a much better understanding of the signs of the times, the second coming, and the saints return to Missouri. So are we going back to Missouri? Yes, but for now, we are to gather where we are and remain strong. Then when we are much closer to the second coming, the remaining righteous saints will flee to Zion as prophesied and build the new Jerusalem as stated in our Articles of Faith. Thanks for watching.